Welcome to the first TBR of 2022. That is right, it's January. It's time to start off a new year with some strong reading goals and to reevaluate kind of what I think that my reading is going to be like during the year. So 2021 was the year where I found my reading tastes shifting a bit and I think I'm definitely just going to lean into that in 2022 and try and make TBRs that are really fitting to my mood instead of fitting to the books that I think that I should be reading. Basically what happened is I feel like I'm just reading way less YA and fantasy and just leaning really heavily into the romance genre but within the romance genre like I will include fantasy romance um so I and just like shifting from like reading younger books to shifting books that are for a older audience because as time get, goes on I'm getting older I'm actually gonna be turning 27 this year which is crazy um so yeah, I just think it's natural that I am shifting to reading more older books. That's not to say that I'm not reading YA anymore, because I am. I just think that it's just way less than it's been in the past, and I find myself only really reading the titles that are really popular because those are the ones that are actually catching my attention, whereas I'm exploring much more like indie, mid-list, different types of books and genres in like fantasy romance and romance all that in general so i'm not gonna just stop reading ya or anything like that but i feel like i'm restructuring my tbr so i only have one or two of those books on my tbrs whereas in the past i used to have like four or five and that'd be my main reading for the month but i just really feel like that's not how i have been reading anymore so i'm gonna try and make my tbrs to match what i've been doing so with all of that out of the way let's get into the books that i want to tackle in january starting off the first month super strong with reading so most of these books i'm going to be reading on my kindle here it is and especially ever since starting to read more romance i've been reading my using my kindle way more and this pop socket i'm against pop sockets on phones but for my kindle it's great especially if i'm on the subway and reading and have to transfer trains instead of like putting my kindle away i just like literally walk up the platform with it like this and it's just super easy to hold which is a random added benefit of the socket but yeah i kind of like this kindle without a case and with the pop socket because the kindle itself is quite durable unless you are my dog because he's eaten three of my kindles first and foremost i'm gonna be doing a vlog series you guys know that i love to do themed vlogs so the first themed vlog series that i'll be working on in january is a sophie lark vlog sophie lark is a romance author that has been super popular especially in the last year or so um gaining popularity throughout all the book communities especially on book talk and i want to tackle her work and read her because i think i'm gonna like her books but i have not read any of them yet so this is actually like gonna be one of the first mafia romances i read uh, i read like some that are like half mafia but this is gonna be like the first like mafia mafia romance that i read I'm the mafia. and it's gonna be like a taste test vlog so i'll be reading the first of her series that like as long as you don't need to have read another series previously so i won't be reading every single one of her series i'll explain it in a bit but the first book that i'll be starting off with is her underworld series the first book is Ivan. This is the story of an American hit woman in Russia being paid to take out one of the most prominent Bratva bosses, Ivan, and being captured by him instead. And it is a dark mafia romance. Yeah, the Bratva is the Russian version of the mafia. Um, I randomly know that from watching Arrow on the CW. Anyways, so Sloan crept into Yvonne's room in the middle of the night with a syringe full of poison. She tried to kill him, but now she is his prisoner. Maddie tells me that this is her favorite mafia romance ever, so I am very excited to read it. And then the next book is going to be Snow, which is the second book in the Underworld series, and I'm going to be reading this one next because the first two interconnect with like the next series that's on my list. So I at least have to read the first two before the next one. Snow is a fighter, and they call him that in the ring because he's ice cold. He doesn't feel fear or pain or much of any Anything else at least until he meets innocent little Sasha she doesn't belong in the world of the Bratva 
However, she's trapped here because she owes a debt that she can't pay and still wants her more than he's ever wanted anything ever. The problem is she already belongs to Bratva Boss who plans on auctioning her virginity to the highest bidder. Snow has to find a way to set her free. Yes, a lot of tropes that I think are gonna be really fun to play around with. Those are the first two in the Underworld series. And so like, I do wanna go back and read the rest in the series, but because those are the first two that interconnect with the Brutal Birthright series and the Kingmaker series, I won't be reading those yet because I'm doing a taste test. So the next book that I plan to read for my Sophie Lark taste test is Brutal Prince. This one is about the Irish Mafia. Callum Griffin is the heir to the Irish Mafia. He's ruthless, arrogant, and he wants to kill Ada. They got off on the wrong foot when she set a very small fire in his house. Their families believe a marriage is the only thing that will save an all-out war between them. Ada thinks she might need to murder him while he sleeps because Ada's got a lockbox around her heart. And even if she's forced to marry him, she could never love a brutal prince. And yes, another mafia romance, very exciting. The next two books that I plan to read for her, Taste Test is the serial killer duet. Yes, she wrote a book about a serial killer, love interest, and I'm very excited. So the first one is called There Are No Saints, and the second one is called There Is No Devil. And since there's only two, I figured I'd just read both of them. Bull is a sociopath serial killer. And he loathes Alistair Shaw because the city of San Francisco thinks that they're rival artists. However, they're predators battling for hunting ground um, and they've never chased the same prey until Mara. Shaw wants to use her as a pawn and Cole is fixated on her for a different reason. She makes him feel things that he thought he could never feel. And he doesn't know if he should protect her at all costs or destroy her before she destroys him. And so yes, this is the ultimate anti-hero story. It's about a serial killer love interest, so very, very dark. Definitely look up trigger warnings before you read, but I'm very interested to see how Sophie Lark will take a literal serial killer and make the reader like that character. Next, I want to continue with the Ice Planet Barbarians series because I said that I would finish it and I plan on keeping up with that promise and I think and I think that the icy cold month of January is the perfect time to settle in with some Ice Planet Barbarians. So where I left off in the series, I am on book number nine. This one is Barbarians Taming. If I happen to get through more in the month, I could potentially do that because these books are pretty quick to read. Um, so this one is about Maddie who is a newcomer to the alien tribe and her sister already has a mate That was what the previous book was about and so she's really struggling and she she's very angry And so everyone's happy except for her So she just feels like really lonely and isolated and strangely enough The only person that really understands what she's going through is the blue skin guy who stole her sister and then the next book in the series would be the aftershocks novella and so this novella I figured I just tack it on there um, and then just continue on with the series so actually let me show you in my notebook of like my to-do lists and stuff or where I just write lists does anyone else just have a notebook where they write lists because it's like the best thing ever okay so I wrote out the reading order of Ice Planet Barbarians um, it's this page and also this page. <laughs> so there is 37 in total because it's the Ice Pump Barbarian series and the Ice Home series and they interconnect so there is a certain reading order so I think after so there's book 9 through 16 and then at 17 you go to the Ice Home series which starts with Lorian's starts with Lauren's Barbarian um so it, it's like an outstanding goal of mine to catch up on the Ice Planet Barbarians series because I adore it. I just think it's like so fun um, and actually like you would think the concept is kind of bizarre but it's actually really good. So this is my outstanding goal for the year. I'm not going to try and do anything crazy like read all of them in a month. Maybe I'll read more than just the one that I put on my TBR but I figured I'd put it on there for now so I get a start on it. Next up is a rom-com that I have an e-arc of from NetGalley that I really want to read before it comes out so that I can have a review out. And that is Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Sullivan. And this one is out on January 11th. It just seems like super cutesy rom-com. Um, and I love the super cutesy rom-coms like The Love Hypothesis is one of my favorite books of 2021. Spoiler alert for my top 10 books. Um, so... A TV meteorologist and a sports reporter scheme to reunite their divorced bosses with unforecasted results. 
Ari Abrams has always been fascinated by the weather and she loves her job as a TV meteorologist. Her boss, legendary Seattle weather forecaster, Torrance Hale is too disrupted by the tense relationship with her ex-husband, who is now the station's news director, to really give Ari the mentorship that she needs. Ari, who runs on sunshine and optimism, is at her wit's end. The only person who seems to understand how she feels is sweet but reserved sports newscaster, Russell Berenger. In the aftermath of a disastrous holiday party, Ari and Russell decide to team up to resolve their boss's issues. Between secret gifts and double dates, they start nudging their bosses back together, but their well-meaning meddling backfires when real chemistry builds between Ari and Russell. And the last little line in this description that I think is so cute says, will he be able to embrace her dark clouds as well as her clear skies? Oh, weather puns. So yeah, the cover is so cute and I just think this is gonna be such a feel-good, cutesy rom-com. So another goal that I have for 2022 is I want to start reading more historical romances because as I'm getting more to the romance genre, I just realized I haven't really read a lot of them and I think that they are so much fun. Like I just have a lot of fun anytime I've read a historical romance and so I will be consulting with the historical romance connoisseurs on YouTube and finding some good recommendations and just getting into the genre. So I'm going to try and read at least one a month. So Maddie recently read this historical romance and I was very intrigued by it. I love Outlander. So when it says Highlander, I'm like, okay. So I'm going to pick up this one first and it's called In Bed with the Highlander by Maya Banks. And this cover, delicious. Okay. And it's a, a new trilogy. So hopefully I'll be continuing on with the trilogy in the months to come. And it features three unforgettable brothers risking everything to save their clan and their legacy and surrender their hearts to love. Evan McCabe, the eldest, is a warrior determined to vanquish his enemy. Now, with the time ripe for battle, his men are ready. And Evan is poised to take back what is his until a blue-eyed, raven-haired temptress is thrust upon him. Mary may be the salvation of Evan's clan. But for a man who dreams only of revenge, matters of the heart are a strange territory to conquer. The illegitimate daughter of a king, Marin possesses prized property that has made her a pawn and wary of love. Her worst fears are realized when she is rescued from peril only to be forced into marriage by her charismatic and commanding savior, Evan McCabe. But her attraction to her ruggedly powerful new husband makes her crave his surprisingly tender touch. Her body comes alive under his sensual mastery and as war draws, draws near, Marin's strength, spirit, and passion challenge Evan to conquer his demons and embrace a love that means more than revenge and land. Yes, okay, so I'm in my Highlander era however this just made me think of outlander and how the next book just came out so i just checked and it is on scribd and the books are so long i actually got rid of most of my copies besides the first one because i didn't think that i would ever really reread them because they are so long even though i love the series so i think i'm going to try and tackle the latest book on audio however it is 49 hours long so i think that this would be an audiobook that would take me several months to read so like i'll put it on my tbr for january but there is no way that i would finish it in january or like anytime soon but i think that this would be a good book to listen to on audio because outlander i love outlander i want to watch the latest season and this is a book series that i actually think is better on tv because it just gets a little bit too bogged down in the descriptions in the books as they go along and i love the tv show i just think the tv show is great and the same executive producer Ron D. Moore that did Outlander is adapting Avatar for Hulu so I have faith in that adaptation so I this is me officially adding Go Tell the Bees That I'm Gone by Diana Gabaldon to my TBR this is the penultimate in the Outlander series and at this point it's very much just like slice of life following Jamie and Claire and their adventures um it's a very interesting okay so for those of you that don't know about Outlander, it is a very interesting blend of genres. Um, so Claire Randall is a nurse in the 1940s. Um, she has just finished being a nurse in World War II and she's reunited with her husband after they pretty much got married and then the war started and they were separated. Um, and while they're kind of getting to be reacquainted with one another on their honeymoon in the highlands of Scotland, she goes to these like ruins and is transported back in time to 1600s clan Highlander Scotland and there she meets a man named Jamie Fraser and they have this beautiful epic love story. And this is the ninth book in the series so it just is spiraling and long and so I just don't think I would have the patience to sit through the physical book. So I'm gonna listen to it on audio because I do love the series but 
I just don't know if I have the time to read that book physically to be honest. Does anyone else that has read Outlander feel that way too? It's also been a really long time since I read the last book because I read them all like right when season one of Outlander was coming out so like 2015 or something like that. Um, I forgot what happened. I'll have to look it up and then just dive into the last book because I do I have read this far in the series. I want to, to read it but like I just feel like the way that I read now like I don't want to spend time on like a 1000 page historical book that is the way that it is. I don't know. I feel like people that have read Outlander will understand what I'm saying. So now I am going to go over my one fantasy book that I have on my TBR for this month, and that is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan. This is an adult fantasy that's coming out January 11th, and I'm just like in love with the cover, and the story just sounds so beautiful. So I really want to get to it because I love reading books when they're first released, and just like that fresh new book feeling and when they're first out in the world and supporting an author by pre-ordering their book. I love it. And it's going to be a duology called the Celestial Kingdom Duology. So it is inspired by the legend of Chang'e, the Chinese moon goddess, in which a young woman's quest to free her mother pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm. So growing up on the moon, already sounds so cool. Xingyin is accustomed to solitude, unaware that she's been hidden from the feared celestial emperor who exiled her mother for stealing his elixir of immortality. But when Xingyin's magic flares and her existence is discovered, she's forced to flee her home, leaving her mother behind. Alone, powerless, and afraid, she makes her way to the celestial kingdom, a land of wonder and secrets. Disguising her identity, she seizes an opportunity to learn alongside the Emperor's son, mastering archery and magic, even as passion flames between her and the prince. To save her mother, Xingying embarks on a perilous quest, confronting legendary creatures and vicious enemies across the earth and skies. But when treachery looms and forbidden magic threatens the kingdom, she must challenge a ruthless celestial em emperor for her dream, striking a dangerous bargain in which she's torn between losing all she loves or plunging the realm into chaos. That just sounds awesome and like the setting of the moon and like celestial beings is just amazing. I am so intrigued by this and really excited to read it. The last book that I have on my TBR for the month is King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair. You've probably seen this everywhere since it came out. This is the Barnes Noble exclusive edition. It doesn't look any different, but it does have some like exclusive content in it. Um, and so this is about Isolde. Isolde de Lara considers her wedding day to be her death day. To end a year's long war and protect the people of her kingdom, she is to marry the vampire king Adrian Alexander Vasiliev and kill him. But her assassination attempt is thwarted, and Adrian warns that if Isolde tries to kill him again, he will raise her as the undead. Faced with the possibility of becoming the thing she hates most, Isolde seeks the other ways to defy him and survive the violent and political machinations of Adrian's brutal vampire court. Except it isn't the court she ends up fearing the most, it's Adrian and her intense attraction to him. Wrapped up in mystery and a past he refuses to discuss, Adrian nevertheless starts to become less of a monster to Isolde. Despite their undeniable chemistry, Isolde can't help but wonder why the king, fierce, complicated, ambitious, and at times inexplicably tender, chose her as a consort. The answer will shatter her world. Um, yes, this, yes, this is like pretty much everything that I want in a fantasy romance, and I really want to read Scarlett St. Clair's other works, like, um, the Touch of Darkness series, which is a Hades and Persephone retelling, which I love Hades and Persephone retellings. Oh my god, that just reminded me I have another book to put on my TBR. Okay, so anyways, yes, this one. I also need to put Electric Idol by Katie Robert on my TBR because Neon Gods loved it, a great Hades and Persephone retelling, and Electric Idol is the second book in Katie Roberts' um, Dark Olympus series. So yes, this one is a Psyche and Eros retelling, and basically Eros is sent to assassinate Psyche, and because she was nice to him one time, he's like, okay, well, because you were nice to me, like you can either marry me or I'll like carve out your heart things evolve from there and yes I love Katie Robert and I'm very excited to get my hands on a copy of Electric Idol so yes I will be reading it okay and then I have one more book that is not officially going on my TBR but I want to put it on as a potential and that is Dark Fae by Caroline Peckham and Suzanne Valenti if you don't know I'm obsessed with Zodiac Academy I have a whole Zodiac Academy reading vlog where I read the whole series on my channel please go check it out because it's so much fun it's really blowing up on tiktok but there are two other interconnecting series in the zodiac academy world and of course i need to read it and this first one is called dark fae and we follow elise as she goes to aurora academy and basically she is there because one of the kings of the academy killed her brother and she needs to figure out which one of them did it um but like it's a reverse harem romance so with 
set within the world of Solaria, which is the world that is ruled by the Zodiac and they are Fae. And I just love this world and I want to read everything by these authors. So that is a potential for January, but I want to get through everything else first. So we'll see how it goes. I feel like this TBR is very in line with the reading mood that I've been in recently. So I'm hoping I can stick to it more than I have stuck to my TBRs these past couple months. So wish me luck and let me know what you are starting off the year reading down below and leave a little snowman if, if you've watched this far and have someone read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.